Now, this is what are you saying, hashtag ways. And we're still talking about climate change. Our guest, Femi Ido Adegoke, has joined us. Thank you so much for coming. He's a chartered waste and environmental sustainability consultant with over 18 years experience in environmental and municipal, right? That's the word, yeah. solid waste management. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome. <laughs> All right, remember you can join the conversation. Tweet to us at Plus TV Africa or at Waste Show Africa One with the hashtag Waste or you send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081 8038 Hmm. Now, we had an interesting guest last month. He's, um, he's a futurist. His name is Thomas Frey. And he said something about um, global, I mean, climate change. That climate change for him is too far-fetched. That if we are talking about um, a specific problem, for instance, waste management, then he would understand. Do you agree with him? Because he's saying that we should stop saying climate change. Let's, let us just select the specific problem and say, okay, how can we combat waste? How can we stop maybe deforestation? You know, that for him maybe would have solved this problem of climate change. Do you agree with that? Well, to, to an extent, I do agree. But uh, like um, you were saying before I came on here, uh, climate change is a both ways. It is natural occurrences that leads to climate change. We might be positive. And uh, human activities, especially, you mentioned it, from uh, industrial revolution time. Uh, let me bring it to waste management now. We've had to use more plastics for packaging over 70 years now. Plastic has taken over mm -hmm. and it's become a menace all over the world. Not only in Nigeria now, all over the world, plastic is a big problem. So waste management, like you said, I'll pick, I'm coming down to waste management now. It's a big, big uh, problem. But it's not, so, it's not that it's not surmountable. It's manageable, it's controllable, and that's why we have the waste management hierarchy. I'll bring it down, where you have to rethink. There, it's called three hours, but that three hours, you can break it down to several, you can even break it down to as many as possible. We have rethink, refuse, reuse, recycle, reduce, and recover. Mm -hmm. So if you practice a sustainable waste management, we'll, we'll be dealing with that problem of impacting on climate change. Yeah. So what would we say that is the most impactful uh, um, segment in terms of climate change? In terms of the impact, is it waste? Is it deforestation? Which one has the most impact? So if we say to, today now, we want to pick other priority mm -hmm. and say we want to start to deal with mm -hmm. um, it one after the other, which would be at the top? Maybe any of us can answer. Okay. He, uh, I mean, that's one of the ways we don't want people to look at climate change. Because, again, we're talking about it being a global phenomenon. Yeah. So whatever you do in Nigeria might not be felt in Nigeria. Yeah. So we have to think as, what, as, as our brother's one. keeper. What you are doing in Nigeria might be felt in Indonesia. So yeah. what you are doing in Nigeria that you feel, oh, I'm emitting excess from agriculture. And it all depends on what exactly is happening in your economy. Yeah. I mean, in Nigeria, for instance, I, I can simply pick gas flaring as our biggest yeah. contributor yeah. Yes. To, to global warming. Mm -hmm. Yes. But if you go to Niger Delta today, apart from the suit that is covered, you might not be getting the effects of climate change as you get it in Lagos that is not flaring gas. Mm -hmm. So we need to think that, I mean, around that holistic manner mm -hmm. so that we don't end up saying, oh, because gas flaring is the issue, yeah. let, let's take care of the Niger Delta yeah. and make I gas mean, you want to add stop. to that? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I agree on the pressure what you said because uh, it's a global village, it's a global phenomenon. What, what I'm doing here, if I'm irresponsible and I'm polluting the environment, might be affecting someone in India or China. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Because, okay. because, um, he mentioned it, the greenhouse gases. Mm -hmm. uh, you can release it from anywhere, from gas flaring, from open dump of waste, uh, which he mentioned earlier. If you have, in Nigeria, for example, now, most of our waste is organic. Yes. We have much of organic waste, almost 50% of our waste or 60% of our waste is organic. And when, like you said, when you leave it open, then it emits a lot of uh, greenhouse gases, which methane is uh, a yes. very high potent greenhouse gas, but when it's captured, it's a good resource. I call waste, I don't call waste waste, it's, waste, it's a resource. For you, yeah. Yes, for me, because I understand it. Because if you capture methane gas, you can get biogas. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. which you mm -hmm. use for your cooking. Yes. It's done in some parts of yeah, Africa yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you can use it for your cooking, you can use it for your electricity. And then at the end of the biogas as well, you get your for, uh, organic fertilizer, which you can use. But right. when you leave it open, it's dangerous. So how expensive? So, okay, oh, sorry, I think you should go. <laughs> okay, so I was going to ask that, how do we um, get into sensitization? Because yeah. um, I don't think in schools they teach climate change as a course. So a lot of kids are graduating and they don't even know. And we know if they're going to change all these things. Like my grandmother in the village doesn't even understand what is going on. In a couple of years, sadly, she's going to leave the earth, right? So we, the generation that are now here and the upcoming generation, how do we sensitize each other? Everybody may not be watching TV at the moment. Yeah. How do we sensitize people to do more? Okay, I'll, um, like, I always say that. It's our, res our collective responsibility. Mm -hmm. The government has a role to play, the community has a role to play. And like you mentioned, the schools, I know some private schools in Lagos, they teach mm -hmm. climate change, even mm -hmm. from primary school. But we need to rework our school curriculum. Even from the public schools, they need to understand. Like you said, in the villages now, they feel the impact of climate change. Yes, it's because true. Because their weather is being distorted. And when I go to my village, they tell me what you are doing in the city is affecting us. us. Wow. It might not be what I'm doing necessarily in Lagos. Like the makeup we're wearing. Yeah, yeah. Hair. <laughs> hair. <laughs> but they are aware something has happened, but they, they can't just say this is what it is. Because now they are, their planting season now varies. Definitely. Right. From what they've been used to. So, and like you said. And the rainy but, season and dry season, it's, it's no longer predictable. Yes. Like climate change now. It's not one day, two days. It's decades to millions of years before we begin to feel the impact. So do you want to add to that how to sensitize people? Yeah, so an another way that um, I always tell people that we should, we should stop the doomsday approach. Mm -hmm. So um, these days when you tell someone about climate change, people just want to work out because they are talking about failure, failure, bad, bad, mm -hmm. bad. We should stop the doomsday approach. And that's why I would like to um, talk about what the futurist said. When you split it, Split those ways, sometimes it's easier for people to understand. Right. So when you're, in, you're talking to um, a, a farming village, talk to them in the farming language. Mm -hmm. Talk to them in the language that you're they telling understand. them, this thing that you're doing is impacting the, that what's making your weather like this. You don't even have to say climate. That will make your weather like this. Mm -hmm. And that goes on. Then you go to the timber manufacturers Community. and you tell them that they are all right. what what really matters to them. I believe, mm -hmm. I mean, if you go to the municipals where we have this the, the cities there, you talk to them about solid waste management and how it's affecting. Those are some of the little niches that we can just begin to carve right. and not spread this. Uh, because I also had the problem when you are talking about climate change. There's always this doomsday approach where people yeah. say the world is coming to an end, yeah. and it's always failure, failure, yeah. failure. Yeah. But if we just remove those little, little extracts yeah. mm -hmm. and talk to them in that language, I think we are going to be best with So I want to come back to, because the question I was going to ask um, was about um, how, how affordable is waste management for any government, for instance? Because we see, I mean, every time I drive on Lagos Ibadan Expressway and I just look towards that motorways, I see the big, huge... Um, dump site, the only uh, um, dump site, and I'm wondering, there's so much that can be done, you know, that we can harness it and convert these things. Either it's too expensive, or it's just that this government, we don't have the willpower to do it. Okay, uh, let me start answering. Uh, waste management is not cheap. It's not cheap. It's expensive because it has a different value chain, from the logistics to the collection to the sorting, to the processing, mm. and then to the disposal. So it's not, but what, we, what, we, what we're practicing before, let me give an example of Lagos State. Lagos State is moving from the linear economy of uh, what we're used to, just use and dump. Now Lagos State has introduced what we call the Blue Box Recycling Scheme, which is going to create some jobs and then begin to recover some part of the recyclable waste and then reduce what ends up in the dump site. Because we don't have landfill site in, in Nigeria, all we have is an open dump site. Mm -hmm. And I, remem I, I remember you mentioned it, well, I think it was last year or two years ago, when we had a burning fire, and it was for weeks. And it's because we've been dumping in Olusosu since 1977. Yes. That's over 40 years. 
So and wow. the impact was more. The gas. I mean, it was just coming. Yeah, it was. It was the methane gas. Yes. It so was, it's accumulated yeah, over the years. Nobody was trapping it. Nobody was collecting it. But uh, another thing that happened in Lucia, so well, let me know a good technical. <laughs> there was a there was a there was a pilot project in Lucia, so, which was abandoned by the last administrator. Wow. Our administration in Lagos. So when that happened, it was like putting a a, a bomb in a burning fire. Ooh. So that went mm -hmm. on. So going back to what we're talking about on waste management, the policy and the implementation, the design, the strategy, that's what we're getting wrong. It's not supposed to be a government government thing. At all. The private sectors have a role to play. The government has to be the regulator and not be a player. Oh, okay. When you are a oh, regulator and you're a player, then there's conflict of interest. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to be a player, be a player. If you're going to be a regulator, be a regulator. Because now in Nigeria, and then the, our system is lopsided. I always say that the state is supposed to manage the local government to deal with our waste. Anywhere in the world, the local government has the power manage the waste because yeah. they are closer to the people. Yeah. Yes. So those are the things we're getting wrong. Okay, so somebody is talking about policy okay. here. Um, a question from one of our viewers. He said, in your opinion, because he was referring to you, what policy has the government implemented that is yielding any positive results currently in, in, in terms of climate change? Okay. <clears throat> <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, uh, the best policy we've ever implemented is the environmental policy. That's okay. the EIE Act. And okay. um, it, it has yielded results when, when followed to the latter, when you start from, um, from point A to point Z. Uh, it involves identifying risks that due to the project, environmental and social risks, and ways to mitigate it. Yeah. And as much as possible, the government has tried to follow up. They do impact mitigation measuring, where they follow up with such projects to make sure that, I mean, those things that they said they were going to do to mitigate those risks uh, are really minimized. Now, the government has not developed any policy and said this is climate change policy. Mm. Most governments won't do that. What we try to do is to develop or modify your policies that exist and turn them to adaptation plans. So you modify the policy. So instead of creating, oh, this is a standalone climate change policy, we have several policies on environment, several policy documents by NESRA, over 40 something for mm -hmm. each, each industry. So it's all about looking at those documents and saying, have we now started to capture completely climate change or global warming or greenhouse gas issues? I can say, top of my head, that there's a policy on food and beverage sector yeah. that has a specific area there on ozone depleting substances. Yeah. If you're a company that you have ozone depleting substances, this is what you should report on, this is what you should emit, this is the benchmark. Mm -hmm. This is what you should measure, and mm -hmm. the government checks those things. As so regulators? As, as regulators. So again, it's back to, do they implement, do they? No, the policies are there, we can modify those policies, and I mean, we are, we are good to go and make sure that we implement them. Okay, so now for having heard all you said about, you know, climate change and waste management, now for someone, a young person who wants to help the society in their only two way, maybe by becoming a waste management entrepreneur, yeah. what, what would they do? What was the way forward? Um, the first thing I always say to anyone that wants to be an entrepreneur in the waste industry is get knowledge. Okay. Yeah, you need to know what you want to go into. You need to know about it. Not... You don't have to be deep, deep, but at least get some knowledge and you can learn as well. So once you, once you get that, then you can decide where you want to play. Do I want to be a logistic person? Do I want to just collect waste? Or do I want to be uh, an advocacy person? I want to go around my community to uh, sensitize them about proper mm -hmm. waste management, separation and source. Don't right. put your waste in your uh, drainage, you know. There are people who want to do that, and there's someone else, okay, no, I don't want to do that. I want to be a waste collector. Okay, I don't want to collect. And we see a lot of them around in Lagos. Yes, I don't want to collect waste. Okay, I want to deal with what you have collected. I want to manage the waste. I want to convert the waste. I want to process the waste. So there are different value chains, which, if you're an entrepreneur, you can understudy, get the knowledge, and see where your strength and your passion, where you can play. Hmm. That's always my advice. Yeah. All right, so I, I, I also want to ask... Um, um, the doctor here, <laughs> doctor. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. No. Is it Femi now? You are the director at Eco. Eco Yes. Yeah. Yes. So what what do you do now? Just tell us in a nutshell what you do as a director in the company. 
Okay. How um, are you helping us to manage this our global warming issues? Okay. <laughs> I well, what we do is we divert municipal solid waste, okay. recyclable ones, from going to the dump site. Okay. And we convert them to secondary raw materials for industries. So examples, please. Examples like pet bottles. Our pet bottles. Okay. It's not. It, it's meant to be a single use. You use and trade away. And like you said, there's a policy with Nesbia, the EPR policy, mm -hmm. extended producer's responsibility. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the food Sorry, and hold on. To break it down, yeah. you, you take, people collect bottles like this and yeah. they bring it to you. Yeah, people collect, I collect myself. Okay, okay. so okay. you have your collectors. Yeah, we have collectors with Lagos State, the Blue Box, we oh, engage okay. in that. Right. And there are people who aggregate as well, who collect. And they come and sell to us. Okay, but well, people who collect it, I'm sorry, yeah. <laughs> I'm cutting you short. People who collect it, do they get paid and what's like the, the price range? Yeah, there, there are different models. There are people who get incentives. Okay. There are people who get uh, paid. So there are different models depending on, see, waste management, you have to look at the locality and the location. Okay. You don't want to go to uh, a suburb in Lagos and tell them they'll get money. And they go and pack all the because we weigh it, it's per kg, it's per kilo that you get paid for. Mm. And they bring it, they think it's much. And you know, plastic is very light. Yeah. By the time you weigh it, and they're yeah, thinking they have 100 kg and it's 10 kg. So, how have, much is a kg? I'm, I'm just giving uh, you for. Auntie? No, 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 I, I do want this. I'm sorry, I'm an entrepreneur. <laughs> Hold on, I'm sure somebody at home is wondering. Yeah, People yeah. are jobless, mm -hmm. they need to find something Let me doing. Give you, like pet bottles now, say 10, 10 and a per kg. Okay. And somebody gathers it and thinks he has a lot and he brings it and it's just 10 kg that he has <laughs> so it's 10 out times 10. Yeah, that's that's like 100 100 now. so you have to go and look for 1000 kg yeah. <laughs> but, but there is a lot of bottles out there a lot of waste yes, out there but that's why we've come up with the with different models people mm. get incentives and you can build points over time okay awesome. when you bring 10 kg today you don't get paid you can build it over I think time. you can consult for her after yeah. the show. She wants to start this <laughs> management business. But I want to come to you because yeah. I know in the uh, um, whenever I travel abroad and you want to go and shop, some stores have yeah. completely changed all their bags to yeah. paper bags. Yeah. And some stores will not even give you bag. In fact, yeah. I, went come with store, your bag. <laughs> I went to a store in France and the woman was looking at me because I had bought everything as a Nigerian. Yeah. Yeah. Where is bag? Where bag? And the woman said, ah. She was it. like this. I, they had to go and get the bean bags because they don't even have bags yeah. in that particular store yeah. Yeah. you know so when we talk about sustainability because you i'm coming to you now yeah. what are you doing you know as a consultant in, what are you doing in terms of um, this sustainability plan does this also help and how can the government probably implement those because we have a lot of people you want to buy rice and beans <laughs> inside nylon mm. you want to drink water is inside nylon you know there's so many transactions especially with um, what's it called? Plastic. Plastic. Yeah, single yeah. use plastic. Yeah, sing so, single yeah. use. Yeah. So how how can we? Yeah. So the, the question is kind of motivated. Yeah, it's very motivated. Well, <laughs> I'll start with what with what we do. Yeah. So what we try to do is uh, as management consultants is mainly to consult at, with that management level and board level. So we come on with uh, maybe industries that are looking to make deals. Um, so, I mean, we are, we, are, we are in talks with some factories that are looking to start um, recycling, mm -hmm. talk to government, consult for government on setting up new policies. Just like this um, single-use plastic ban in mm -hmm. some of these countries. Mm -hmm. Even in the UK, there are some stores now that you must enter with your bag. Right? Yes, yeah. so. And there are stores where, where you ask for the bag. The bag is more expensive than, than, than yeah, what you yeah, bought. Yeah. Yeah. So you pay for sure. the bag. Yeah. So every time you go there, you are paying for the bag. Yeah. So it's not in Nigeria where you buy 100 naira bread and ask for two black nylons. Mm -hmm. I don't know what mm -hmm. you want to use it for. But you know, that's where <laughs> you do. The two black nylons is more expensive than the bread right, when it right, comes yeah. to the environmental cost. Mm -hmm. So those kind of things is what, but you see, it's, it's so easy sometimes to look at these things and say, why doesn't, why can't government just do this, this, this? Mm -hmm. All right. And that's where sustainability has to come into it. Mm. Somebody's making those nylons. You can't ban it. Mm. If not, that company is going to close down. It's going yeah. to send many, of, many people that's jobless. True. So it's either you empower that company to be able to recycle those nylons, to find mm. something else for them to do. Make policies that you make sure that everybody gains, so you yeah. don't have social issues coming to knock at your door. Yeah. The truth is that, yeah, it's, it's bad to flare gas, and uh, yeah, we are trying to put our new policies on Nigerian gas flare. We can't stop saying because we want to flare, stop flaring gas, we we'll stop producing oil. It's not possible. Yeah, yeah. Mm. that economy must balance, and that's the same way we must look at all these things. Across. Yeah, single plastic use is bad, but has government established any policy to say that, as a Coca-Cola, for instance, yeah. or as a Pepsi? Make sure that your plastic, 80% of it is recycled. Yeah. There's no policy on that. Mm. And mm -hmm. there's a policy on that in Europe. 70% wow. is recycled. Mm -hmm. So whatever you're doing, they don't care about your cost. 
So I want to be sure it's recycled. And you, I mean, based on competition, you still bring down your cost anyway. Definitely. Because by the time you see maybe Pepsi Cola doing that, yeah. you have to bring down your cost. Mm -hmm. Those are the kind of things that, that we're engaging can, with government yeah. on consulting to say awesome. this is possible. But it's not also going to be government's responsibility to mm -hmm. conclude on it. Investors have to come in. Mm -hmm. So when you tell them that, oh, we can do 70% recycling, Coca Cola now tells you, okay. I'm ready. Mm -hmm. Start. Mm -hmm. Do you have any recycling plant? No. no. Nobody has come to invest. Mm -hmm. Do you have any standardized method of collection or, or a plastic waste index? Mm -hmm. you know? Something to even show that you have a So this is a prior. huge industry as no. well. Yeah. I mean, I'm just seeing a lot of opportunities. Yeah. 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 See? That's why you're collecting. Exactly. Your exactly. Or is there a lot of money question. to be made? How much, because we have just one minute, how, how much? much contribution has the Nigerian or, um, Orientation Agency made on this climate change? Has, have, has there been our agency, our National Orientation Agency? Yeah, uh, they have made, but it might be minimal because okay. I, had, uh, I was opportunity to be at one of their yeah. uh, seminars and discussions on single-use plastic. Uh, we were discussing about banning it, like he said, you can just go out and try to ban. Yeah. See, because there was a time, if you know, there was a bill that was supposed to go on yes. to to ban the plastic way, uh, use in Nigeria, plastic bags. But like he said, rightly mentioned that you can't just ban it when. You are going to render some people jobless. Yeah. So they, you have to look for an adaptation, a sustainability adaptation procedures. So which is, um, but like I said, our son, I do what they what they call it, yeah, uh, uh, or national orientation agency. agency yes. mm. They can do more. Definitely. They can do more. I think let's leave it there. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much to Aladi Adini and Femi Dewadi. Okay, you guys were amazing. Mm -hmm. I've learned a lot. I've and we're seeing lot. business opportunities no, here. Oh, no. <laughs> we're we're seeing business opportunities. But we will continue to talk about this yeah. here because for us, I mean, it has really hit home for us, especially, yeah. I mean, weather. from December, all the, yeah. the weather. Yeah. So yeah. if the heat waves, yes, yes, if, yes, if we did not understand it before, yeah. everybody has felt it. Yes. Yes. So we have to, we have to yes. start helping people to, yeah. to, to help get our, our climate better, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. yeah. All right. So you can watch a repeat broadcast at uh, 3 p.m. tomorrow and keep all the conversations going on all our social media platforms as we continue to hear what you are saying. Now, in case you missed today's quote, here it is again. The evidence for human-made climate change is overwhelming. Is this true? Yeah, yes. True. Absolutely. <laughs> so I guess true. agree with that. So enjoy the rest of your evening and be responsible to our climate, please. Dispose your waste. Yeah. <laughs>